thinking. Warren Ingram from Galileo Capital. Um, household budgets. I mean, everyone's costs are going up. Uh, Pierre Fontana just telling us, you know, households, it's affecting the way people go out and even have a hamburger. Money is tight. It is tight. And, and I think the, the big issue for us as, as South Africans now is we, we had this, this kind of very middle of the road budget that, that, that everyone's equally unhappy with. Uh, and unfortunately inside there was another little, uh, little kicker in our, in our pants, which is, you know, this carbon tax and additional fuel taxes. Yeah. So, so that means fuel costs are going to go up, which means cost of living goes up because the price of fuel affects everything. So how do we reduce lifestyle costs? Because the only thing we can do, um, you can only do 17 jobs. You can only, you know, there is a limit to what you can do to achieve income. Um, so if there is a limit to what you can earn, you can't job hop and jobs are scarce and you can't necessarily get the higher paying job. At least in the short term, you've got to say, here is the cloth uh, and we are uh, expanding over the cloth. We need to... We need to look slice at the and dice different. Slice and dice very different. So, so I think the first thing, um, and and it, it's an exercise that I did. Um, I have the, the the great fortune of of being the the son of an electrical engineer. So he did the he put a, a meter on my geezer, which measures how much electricity I've been using for the last few months. And we came to the conclusion that um, if I get a kit on my geezer, which converts it from a normal geezer to getting solar power, so just a kit, I buy it and I put it on, these things are for sale everywhere, um, I get back what I spent in about a year and a half. But that takes some capital outlay. Not everybody's got the cash to spend on the kit. But, but if you can, yes, that's step one. That's that's the first big idea. And, and convert to a solar geyser. Solar geyser. We spend about forty eight forty eight percent, I think forty percent, sorry, of our of our expenditure on electricity as an average household is on uh, electricity expenditure is on, on hot water. So just think about that. We know ESCOM's gonna push up prices, we know it's coming, we just don't know how much. So if you can reduce that cost, forty percent of your electricity bill to either zero or very low just on on the water side of it, uh and you get that energy free, you know, for now. Uh, I don't think ESCOM are charging us for the sun yet. Uh th- then to me that becomes a no brainer because you know the payback period's gonna get shorter and shorter and shorter. Right. Okay, so if you can lay out some capital on a solar geezer and cut forty percent of your electricity bill, that's a good place to start. Yeah, and I think we need to start so, so then if we look at transport you know all of us spend money on transport in one way or another and if you look at the highways lots and lots many thousands of people every single day driving uh, one person to a car yeah I'm afraid now when you look at the fuel prices going up again, uh, you know, I, I, you talk to a lot of South Africans who earn salaries and it's just this sort of a framing of, of the way that they think about life that that needs to change because the the reality is, as you've mentioned, I mean, everyone's struggling. Everyone's uh, revenue is shrinking or staying the same while their cost base is going up. Look at the way you drive every day and say to yourself, surely there is a way to find a way to do at, at least ride sharing uh, or, or or to look at some kind of a safe public transport uh, option here. But, but Or carpooling, you know, I think there, there needs to be a time now where you change the way that you, you, you think about uh, getting yourself from point A to point B. And this this kind of mindless… There are people shouting at you in their cars by themselves right now. So they look, <laughs> so they look mad and they say, but there's no public transport, Warren, you're just unrealistic. Well, that's, that's what people uh, shout at you about. Well, it's amazing, uh, you know, taking car train to to the airport. Uh, how many people are using car train as a normal, regular public transport method? And yes, it doesn't work perfectly all the time. But nor does nor does the traffic work uh, perfectly all the time, especially when there's load shedding. And and it, if that's too much effort or or too unreliable for you, then really go and investigate the this ride sharing. And to me, you know, th- we saw that brilliant app that came out with with Escom and load shedding. Uh, What's some, it called? Eskom Sapush. There we go. Thank you. Um, uh, that I said that right. <clears throat> My Afrikaans isn't good. So surely there, there, there's an app now about ride sharing. And, uh, and you know, that, that, there must be one now. That, yeah, I think uh, I, saw, I saw a story about a couple of entrepreneurs who actually have set up uh, a ride sharing app. Um, Tiso, can you have a look and just see if you can find it? There's a ride sharing app somewhere. South African ride sharing app. Um, medical aids, a okay. uh, big outlay on medical aids. And a lot of people will say, oh, I'm on the uber glorious, delicious medical aid that covers my sneezes. Um, perhaps people need to reconfigure their medical aids. So, so I'm, I'm one of those people. I, I mean, we, we don't have kids. So, so I, I eventually said to my wife, why do we keep paying, uh, our medical aid to give us money back for our dentist visits and our glasses and all that stuff? Let's get a hospital plan. And, and when we really need it, we've got, we've got the cover for the rest. We'll sort ourselves out. That's okay because we don't have kids and the like, but there's some things that everyone can do. One of them is, 
a lot of medical aids have they almost call them network options so so what that means is if you opt in to say okay i will i will go to the hospitals and the doctors that you have authorized and chosen then uh, th- then you get a lower medical aid rate i i, I heard the story of a of a woman in a in a very early 70s whose medical aid costs went from i think 4000 to 2500 just by opting into to a network option you've got to trust the network though you've got to trust that the option is good and you've got to trust that it's going to work for you because i mean again um historically people well healed south africans who have not had gone sit in the, the queue at a government clinic but have had their own GP and they've had the opportunity to phone the GP at a moment to sort of say, <laughs> help um, and, and pitch and, sure. and get see one doctor every time. And that relationship is comforting to many people. But I think the world is moving beyond that. And and the and the point here is we, we're not in a we're not in a world of of positive choices anymore. Now we're in a world of trade offs. So if the trade off is you're going to still get private care and you're still going to get a high quality doctor, remember they're not choosing terrible doctors. Yeah, they're just choosing it in a in a way where you might have to sit for 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 a half an hour before you get served. Well, you do that I anyway. do that irrespective. <laughs> you do that anyway. I mean, the, the worst timekeepers in the world, and I hope my GP's not the thing. Um, our GPs they rubbish at it. So so staying on the medical aid theme, the, 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 you know we we've all been gamified by by um a Big, the big medical aids in South Africa to pay them lots and lots of money for loyalty programs that they tell us are good for us. And then we see every year when they report their results, how much money they make out of these loyalty programs. Guess what? But you know, I, I'm getting... I'm, they're I'm, making it from us. Uh, we just have to know. They most certainly are and you're wearing a watch and you're admitting that you're part of the problem. Um, and I looked at this last year on my particular medical aid and I know that I've been paying for this particular loyalty scheme for a long time, probably 15 years. And I haven't received a single advantage out of that medical scheme, well, out of the thing. And that's my fault because I didn't look at the T's and C's. I want to be part of this law scheme because the PR is really good around it, but I haven't actually engaged in it. And so September last year, we engaged and we're engaging very actively. With this, with, with, so you are being gamified. You, we're being, you know we're being completely gamified. Okay. Uh, but at the end of this year, I'm going to do the calculation as to the savings and the benefits. And if the benefits do not outweigh the cost, and they will, because we're working it, <laughs> to can play this game. But so, I'm not sure that necessarily it's worth all the time and the energy and the sweat no. to, to play the game. No. Because and, the game is hectic. And, you, and you're in a point, again, we're in a, we're in a life of choices here, difficult choices. And that, that is certainly not a requirement. And if I look at my, um, my, my gym, where I go, and, and my gym's you know, w- 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 connected to one of these things, I, I see how my gym is absolutely full in January, and it's absolutely full at the beginning of spring, and then it's pretty dead for the rest of the year. So I know there are many hundreds of people paying these loyalty things every <laughs> Yes, but you're then, if you're the one who is participating and you're the one playing the game, you're the beneficiary of everybody else falling off the wagon. What we should be saying to people is if you are going to be participating in this loyalty scheme, get on the bus and participate. Or get be honest with yourself. Get off. Exactly, and I think that's the point. The bulk of the bulk of the people uh, on these things are not. They're not on the bus. The, the, the numbers tell us they're not on the bus. Otherwise, these big medical aids would be losing money. Correct. But so, they, but they but they've got actuaries. They, they've got actuaries. We know what, what I think about. Okay. Actuaries. So yeah, cell phone contracts. Cell phone contracts are so absolutely critical because these are brutal things. They are brutal things, and 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 we see now new entrance into the into the cell phone market, uh, and and to me, I mean, one of the very first things I've done this calculation time and time again, and. If you can break the cycle of buying a new phone every 18 months, because you know that we said it's two years, but it's not actually because they phone you after 18 months to tell you you can get a you can get a new phone, and you go and buy a high quality phone either secondhand or wait for the model just to get a bit old and then go and buy it, do the pay as you go thing. You will. It's absolutely certain that you will save money, and you just manage your 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 your, your spend correctly with these now data only cell phone providers. You can spend <clears throat> a lot less money because you know make WhatsApp calls and the like. Uh, and when the dual SIM phones come in, which is very soon, then uh, th- th- then you save yourself a heck of a lot of money. But the point is, break the cycle of just this mindless expenditure where you know we we rotate our cars every five years because they're guarded motor plan. We rotate our cell phone every two years because the biggest false economy in the world has got to be to sell your car at the end of five years and justify it to yourself that it's out of motor plan. I might have to pay twenty thousand rand for my next service. I, I, I agree, and I mean, and I mean, the problem here is we've got two two guys who firmly believe in this and who drive very old cars. So, so. just wait till I break down. <laughs> um, then grocery, grocery. Gr- grocery oh. shopping, and w- we've fallen into the trap again of 
There's a butternut and there's a bag of chopped butternut. Now, if you ever tried to peel and chop a butternut, chopped butternut is a very attractive thing to buy. But you don't have to do that. You can so, change this. I'm, I'm going to give all credit to the spreadsheet queen, otherwise known as my wife. So, so she, she focuses on this stuff very carefully. And she, she came to me and she said, you know, we, we're buying more fruit and veg than we've ever bought before uh, because we, we're staying healthy. Because, and the loyalty scheme gives you cash back no, if, if you, if no, you buy no, lots no, of fruit no, and veg. No, 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 no. Oh. Because we're out of the national chains. We don't buy at the national chains anymore. We're buying at our local green grocer. And we're paying about a third of the price that we were paying Is at the cheaper? national chains. That much cheaper. We're in, in fact, we found one down the road that's, a, that's the wholesaler to the other green grocers. And so they're even cheaper than all the rest. And we look at the fruit and we started doing this actually for health reasons because the apples that we were buying would last in my fridge for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And that just didn't seem right to me. That just, that, that doesn't make sense to me. And so I started worrying about the health issue, but then the spreadsheet queen pointed out how, how much money we're saving just by shopping around. Yes, we can't get our apples at every single day of the year. We get them in season now and then that's great because we rotate to the other fruits and so on and so on. But it's amazing how much money we save just doing that. And, and yes, we, we have to do a little bit of work because now we don't get the stuff into little nicely packaged packets where we're spending money on plastic and all that stuff. We, we, but we're saving a heck of a lot of money. And then, very quickly, changing the way you watch TV, how does that save you money? Be, because we all mindlessly pay our, our, our subscriptions to, to the big so, uh, you know, satellite provider here without looking at the, the 100 rand a month we could pay or the 120 or 80 rand or whatever it is. Uh, to, to a subscription service. But I can get my DSTV without having to have a big fat broadband connection, which costs me more than a DSTV subscription. Uh, uh, and nowadays, that's, that's changing rapidly. I mean, the cost of data is dropping all the time. And most households in that we're talking to this evening will have a broadband connection anyway, which you're probably not utilizing adequately because you've got a satellite dish on your roof. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's 899. We can save. I'm, I'm kind of guessing as we go along how much money we're saving. Um, School cl- school clothes. There's a second hand shop in most schools. Yeah, this, they, uh, I found out today they call them a uh, clothing bank, and um, and the point is your kids are going to outgrow their clothes within about three months, irrespective. Uh, so so why are you why are you buying the newest stuff? Buy the second hand stuff that looks perfect. No one knows that it's second hand, and then go and give it back to the school bank or sell it back to the school bank, and then keep going like that until your kid stops growing. If that's what you're what's mm. bothering you. Okay, that, that, that's another way. What do you not do? Don't cancel your insurances. Don't cancel your medical aid. Don't it's so cancel. tempting, though, because they're big ticket items and yeah. you resent them. Exactly. But when you're struggling, this is where Murphy's going to come along. So you are, you are going to have the car <laughs> Murphy's, accident. Murphy's going to clap you. So don't do that. Yeah. And what about saving? Because, again, the easiest way to not spend uh, – to, to, to keep up a lifestyle – is to cut your savings. Cut savings because we'll catch up. You just need to know now is the time you should be you, you should be maintaining your savings because the markets are cheap. Uh, you know we, we are going to get rewarded for for being saving for saving. Don't stop saving until you've retired. So so just keep going now. Maintain the discipline. Rather cut the other things. The the, the luxuries. Saving isn't a luxury. It's right next to oxygen. <laughs> um, okay, so I've, I've done some rough calculations uh, And by the way, there is an app And look, we don't know how good these apps are We don't know how safe they are, we don't know anything But You Go My Way is a carpooling app It's one. You of Go My Way You Great. Go My Way we go. Um, But let's say if you get a solar geezer And you uh, outlay some capital 5,000 rand Over time you'll save um, for 60% on your electricity bill Because geezers like electricity Yeah, um, 40% yeah. 40%, I beg your pardon And let's say you spend 1,000 Let's say you save 400 uh, your range of transport differently. Maybe you save 500 rand because you use your car one week out of four out of pe- four people who live near you and you share. And instead of spending 2,000 rand, you're spending less money. So whatever it is, you save 500 rand roughly. Um, so we've got ourselves 900 rand in savings. You cancel your loyalty program on your medical aid. That's another 300. That's uh, 1,100. Your cell phone contract, you save yourself 300 rand a month because you'll be more careful about it. That's really 1,400. Was there groceries? Save yourself five hundred. Uh, cut your DSTV. Save nine hundred immediately. Boom, just like that. Big ticket. Thanks for coming. Big, R- coming, R- big we'll, one. We'll, we'll add back two hundred because you you subscribe to one. Okay, of the uh, okay, fine. But I mean, there's two thousand rands with the savings just there, and for a lot of people, they can actually probably cut a lot more than that off yeah. their of expenditure. Warren Ingram, Galileo Capital, Captain Cheapskate.